All right, so we are in the process of texturing this airplane, and I've run into the part where I want to add some decals and graphics to the body of the airplane. So uh, what I'm going to do is make one texture for the side view, and it's going to project straight through the entire airplane. And also I'm going to make one texture for the top view, and it's going to project straight through the wings. Uh, the front and the back wings, which will be masked off so we can uh, isolate them. So first of all, we're going to have to make the mask. So I'm going to pick two in a row and also pick two in a row. Press L for loop and then G to fill all the rest of the wing. And then G to grab these little flaps. So now when I have the wing selected, I can right click anywhere. I'm just right clicking anywhere in the window and say add to selection set. And then I'm just going to type in a name like uh, top. This will be for my top texture. Make sure mode is on add and say OK. All right, that's it. Let me delete all this junk. And so if I go to shading on the right and go into my body, so here's my body, right? I can change the color. This is all one material here. Great. So what I'm going to do is make another folder inside the body. So I'm inside the body, say add layer group. And with the group, I'm going to put another material in the group. So add layer material and now let's change the color to blue just to make it visible and inside the group I'm going to click on the group and I have a bunch of options for masking of the group down on the bottom right so under polygon tag type I'm going to change that from material so click on material and I want selection set. And now from polygon tag, I'll just pick that top selection set that I just made a second ago for the wings. And now you can see that anything that's inside that top group will take on that, that uh, blue color. So this is good. That means that this just means that uh, we've got the masking working correctly. So the next thing is to start making textures. So if I go to right view, I'm just going to make a screenshot and just make sure that this screenshot is matching exactly up to the edge. You can also just take a regular screenshot and crop it. Actually, I'm going to do that. So print screen, open up Photoshop, and now I'm going to crop straight to the border, right here, right here. And it's really important to get this super as close as you can, like right on the pixels there. And then this one is good. OK, so enter on that. And let's go back to Moto and let's go to top view do the same thing here. Oh shit. Shoot. I hope this oh let me do it again. Do 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 I need to yeah let me redo this. It's important to get this matching exactly because this is going to be how precise your texture will line up in Moto. So make sure it's right there. Okay. Alright, that's good. And let's do it again for the top. Print screen, or take a screenshot, new document, paste that, crop it right here and here ok 
Okay. Oh. All right, so now I'm going to scale these up a little bit. So let's change the image size. Right now it's pretty low res, so maybe uh, 2500 height. Okay. And this one should be 2500 width. So they're both 2500 along the length of the airplane. Like going this way, right? Um, so now I can save these two. Oh, shh. Um, oops. So yeah, let's save this as my top view. Do 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 do. Top. Okay. And then this will be side. Okay. So now let's go back into Moto and let's add a layer to this top. We're going to add that image. So I'll go down to image, load image, and then we can look for that. Uh, it should be right here. Top. All right, so here it is. It's not being projected correctly yet, so I have to go to the texture locator over on the right side and change it from UV to planar. The projection axis should be on Y for up and down. And now I can see that it's showing up, but it's pointing the opposite way. So let me fix that by rotating it on Y by 180. So now I'm facing the right way. And uh, the scale is kind of weird too. So let me try um, let's try auto size, see if that works. No, not really. Um, hmm. So one option is we can go to view and dimensions. Select the airplane and we've got our dimensions here. So 19 feet 5 inches, 23 feet, 4 inches. So if I go back to my texture, uh, oops, texture locator here, on inside the top view, I have a texture locator. And I'm going to type in those dimensions. So I've got my X value is correct already. It's 23. And then Z should be 19 feet and 5 inches. Okay, so that's the correct dimensions. And let's just zero this out, the position. All right, and this looks almost right. Ah, it's still a little bit off. Anyways, um, you, from here you can just scale it in item mode using your regular scale tool and just try to match it with the border doesn't have to be perfect but Ugh, like that all right so this should be good and um, I can see that my image is it's a little bit off maybe I can move it forwards a little bit Okay, good enough. Um, now I'm going to move on to the outside of the top group, so I can even close that top group. And now I'm back to the regular body, which we'll consider as the side view. So let's add in the side texture. Add layer, image, load image, and grab the side. And here it is again. We have to do the same exact process. So Let's drag that under the top view. Grab the texture locator, change the projection type to planar. The direction this time is side view, so I'm going to say X projection. Okay, so here it is, little grandpa tablecloth. 
and I'm going to rotate it 180 so it's facing the right way and then let's try auto size and it's almost there but not quite still so I'm gonna again just scale it and move it um, right there scale it just try to match that box and if you're not seeing this this locator box square then you can press control 1 toggle texture locators to see those and to select them you have to be in item mode so press number 5 to go item and pick your locator alright so this should be good I have my I can see my textures lining up with the wireframe so that's correct and now that's that's the hard part I'm gonna save this and go back to Photoshop and start messing with it so let's see let's say I want a white circle in the back I'm gonna make a new layer fill that and I don't know, make it small I think there's some green stripes on the actual airplane so I'll just put a green stripe here and this can all be uh, overlapping the model too it doesn't need to be exact so I'm just gonna stick it over let me look at some reference um, Machi M39 let's just see what the graphics are like so there we go that's it um, so you can make up your own graphics or go with the the existing ones I actually have a, I think I have a pre-made one over here so this is the graphics over the model here um, same thing I just did it earlier so let me save this as my side oops um, actually I'll just keep this as side graphics and go back to moto and replace so here's my side in your case you would just save over your side view and it would update in moto automatically but in my case I want to replace my existing um, side view with a new one so I'm gonna go to the image layers go add clip load image and go look for that image if it doesn't crash okay let's see add clip load image where is it There we go. Um, so this is backwards. I'm going to unrotate it in the texture locator. There we go. That's the right side around. And uh, let's do the same thing for the top view. Um, bum, 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 top view. I pre made my top view also, I think. Or come to think of it, there isn't really much of a top view here. So, mm, yeah, we actually don't need the top view. <laughs> but let's say I wanted to add some stripes onto the wing here. Um, so let's get my top view. And it's as simple as making some stripes. Maybe there's one white and one green. that 
and copy this over. And again, you can overlap here because you know it doesn't matter. It makes it a little bit easier. So now all I have to do is hide this and also hide the background. Actually, delete the background. Keep your reference image just just in case you need to place things, but delete the background. And then we can save over this. Control S and when you go into Moto and you've saved over it, you'll get this little reload change image. Yes, please. Okay. And there we go. We've got the stripes over our base material, which is this blue thing. So in this case now, I actually want to delete my blue material so that everything is running off of this original red. So I can change this color to whatever. And the nice thing is that my both textures are going to apply to it um, and keep the underlying color. I don't know what, what this extra junk is. Uh, what's going on there, buddy? Yeah, okay. So let me save over that again. Okay. And I don't know what's happening here. Mm. That's very confusing. What if I make it like some other color here? Okay. All right, this is confusing. Thanks, Moto. Thanks. Um, I'm going to delete that. And let's just scale these a little bit in. I think they're too thick. Save it. Uh, huh. That's really confusing. Anyway, maybe we have to go to uh, reset and reset. That's, no? If, uh, what, how does it look in the texture? Okay, when we render it, that's not happening, but in the viewport it is for some reason. Anyways, let's just ignore that. Um, hmm. Where is that coming from? Okay. Maybe let's put another stripe in the tail. Oops. Wait, there are stripes there. You're so confusing, bro. Okay. Hmm. All right, so um, so I'm getting some kind of strange behavior here, where the tail is picking up the texture from the side view um, uh, texture when it should be only top view, right? So the problem is that my textures have transparency in them, which means since the top view is transparent, there it's gonna ignore it and go with the side view. So in that case. The only way to block it out would be to um, copy this material. Let's say this is our body material. I'm going to right click the body material, create an instance of it, and drag it into this top group. And what that does is it just makes like a little base layer so that we're not 
dealing with that transparency issue here. So there we go, the top view is, is clear. Um, and it should be that when I change my original body, it should respond with the other one too, with the instance. All right, so this setup is, is cool. I think this works. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is work on the the overall body texture and trying to get some irregularity into the reflections. So let's save this first. And now let's go and look at the Machi M39. And I'm going to look at some of the reflections that are happening in here. Oops. So any kind of large vehicle or relatively large vehicle is going to have some sort of slight warping in the metal or the skin usually. So this you can see the, the reflections are a little bit wobbly, a little bit stri they have some striations in them. So I'm going to try to sh get that in my model. So let's go back to Moto and I'm going to add a material here or sorry, sorry, add a layer, uh, enhance moto textures, noise, and let's try lump. And lump, let's see what lump does. So there it is, it's kind of a black and white, noisy, cloudy image, uh, or sorry, procedural texture. So again, I'm going to the texture locator to adjust it. And what I want to do is stretch it out up and down so it looks more like tall striations. So let's go to the size and make that like two meters tall, maybe 10 meters tall. Okay, so now we can start to see them stretching out. And also I want it to be, uh, actually this might be okay. I think this will be fine. Um, so I'm gonna switch it from controlling the color to controlling the bump which will give us some nice reflections so let's go over to where it says diffuse color next to lump it says diffuse color I'm gonna right click the diffuse color which is the effect that it's having right now so I want to change the effect by right clicking and go down to surface shading and then bump and there it is it's really lumpy uh, maybe too lumpy so I'm gonna gonna go down to the original body layer and down underneath the color underneath all these settings if I click the little double arrows or you can close this top menu uh, here we have the blump bump amplitude and that's too much let's try like yeah, that's a little bit better. Maybe a bit more. 0. 0.4 inches. Yeah. Okay. All right. And um, let's go back to that lump. And you can continue adjusting the size of it. Maybe maybe it can be even tighter or loose I don't know so yeah this is up to your personal taste um, also with the material you can adjust the um, the reflection here so maybe like low reflection and a high Fresnel and make sure blurry is on if you're on 901 the blurry will always be on so don't worry about that um, and you just control how blurry it is with this roughness so maybe uh, just that okay that's like super shiny maybe
I mean, I usually like having some roughness first as kind of like a base paint. And then you can add on a little bit of clear coat if you want. So I have 10% here. Like this is what 0% looks like. It's kind of more of a matte finish. And then you can have like 100% clear coat and adding that on top. But in this case, I don't think it's that glossy. It's up up to you, but 10% should be fine. Okay, good. And let's save it. And uh, let's see this thing. Um, also, the the um, the top view. Uh, the bump is kind of directional, right? It's it's stretching up and down, so it works for the side view. But for the top view, it's kind of pointing in the wrong direction. So maybe we can change that. Also, I don't I don't know. It kind of looks weird to me the the way this bump is working. So I'm going to change the lump by right clicking on lump and change type to enhance textures, noise, maybe bozo be better mm. so this is a little bit of experimentation but these all do different stuff let's see you might have to go in and adjust the um, the scale of it again So here I'm just tightening it up. That seems to be working. But I think the height. And you can go back to the body and just again go down to the bump. All right, and I'm gonna do. Oh, fuck. Let's see. Maybe. Just adjusting that lump a little bit, stretching it out. Okay, and um, so now it's it's working on the side view, I think, the striations, but on the 
top view, it's going the wrong direction. So again, I'm going to do a copy of it. So right click, duplicate, and stick that into the top version. And this one, I can just rotate it. So I'll go to the locator, rotate it 90 degrees, and that should hopefully do it. Oh, and I need to change the projection to Y. Okay, let's see. Let's make the Z really long and then the X really thin. Okay, so now we're starting to see the uh, striation going that way. And it should be okay. Maybe like that. All right, so let's save that. And uh, so let's put it into the ocean by um, adding uh, an ocean plane. So I'm going to say hold shift and click a plane and then scale the plane up. So here we go. Here's the ocean. And give it an ocean material. Press M to make ocean okay so now with the ocean I'm gonna do the same thing with the bump so add layer enhance moto textures then water then windy waves and let's look and see what that looks like uh, also let me get my light and delete it for now All right so here's my water I can see the texture. It's really huge though. So I'm going to go up here to locator and again just make sure I'm scaling this down. Alright, something like this I think. Hmm. All right, so let's, let's see, one meter. All right, let's just try one meter. And I'm going to switch this from diffuse color to bump again. And with this uh, ocean material, let's increase that bump amount. It's hard to see now because we're, we're just using a regular material. So let me turn off diffuse so it turns black. Just type in zero for diffuse and um, let's match specular. There we go. So we're getting some reflection now. I want Fresnel to be about a hundred or eighty. So I get that fade in effect. And now I can start playing with the size of this bump. So I think the bump is too small maybe. So let me go back to the locator, make this like 30 meters hunter. Okay, that's way too big. 10 meters. Okay, 15 meters. And also, let's go to the material and make sure that bump amplitude is, is high enough. All right, so there we go. Maybe like, you know, crank that up 
make it really obvious. So now we can go back here, try 30 feet, 60 feet. All right, 100 feet. Now we're getting something. Okay, maybe that's a little bit too big. Find a sweet spot. All right, it works. So let's save once more. And um, okay, we're almost there. I'm going to add in a light again. So let's go item, create light, directional light. Item, create light, directional light and uh, let's go down to the directional light and I want the physical sun to be working so let's close that physical sun on and we can change what time it is here uh, why isn't this showing up okay um, also, our environment needs to be changed to physically based light, and the sunlight is set to that new light that we just made. Get this. There we go. So now the sunlight is starting to work. Um, I would also turn off the clamp on the sun, so say no clamp, and also no clamp on the sky. Oh, that's kind of neat. But yeah, no clamp on the sky. And then we can go to the final color, make sure this clamp is off. And the white level, we can play with that to make it work better. Um, also, there is a north offset on the light, so I'm going to go to the, the sunlight, and down here in the, there's this north offset. Change the direction of it. Gamma, should gamma be one, maybe? Right, there's our sun up there. Yeah, where's the... It seems really dark. Uh, well, I guess that's normal. The other, other thing with the sun is I want to make the shadows a little bit softer, so I'm going to go to the sun, directional light, and spread angle, make that like 3%, 4%. All right, so I'm going to turn this off. And I think um, I want the camera view to be kind of like at a glancing angle so we can see that the bump on the on the body. So maybe like here. And we can also do a little bit of, uh, of uh, fog or environment to blend that, that ocean into the environment. So let's see here, is it under here? Fog type. Linear. Hmm. Uh, Mm 
Mm -hmm. Where does the fog go again? Oh, here we go. Some haze. Where was that fog again? Under environment. Fog. So let's make this fog start out a little bit farther away. Maybe we could um, get the rendering to be wider, so let's just make it like 2500. Could also do a little bit of blurring on the camera, so let's look for that camera. Do 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 camera. Uh, one more effects depth of field, and let's auto focus it. And So a lower f-stop will make it more dramatic and a higher f-stop will be uh, less blur. Alright, so when this is set up, I'll just say save again. And let's say options and full resolution. And then we just sit here, maybe go get some coffee or something, and it should be done in a bit.